For chapter 9, I was asked a few questions, and we'll start with number 23. So chapter 9, number 23, we have the sun moving in a circular orbit around the center of our galaxy. The radius of this orbit is 3 times 10 to the 4 light years. So let's go ahead and write that down. Radius is 3 times 10 to the 4 light years. And since light years aren't a unit that we usually work with, we'll go ahead and convert this into our SI unit, where 1 light year is equal to 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. And that's a conversion factor that you would be given if you needed it. And when you do this, your light years cancel. I'll plug this into your calculator to find that the radius is 2.84 times 10 to the 20 meters. So that's a pretty big distance. What they want us to do is calculate the period of the orbital motion and calculate the orbital speed of the sun. And we need to do this by noting that the mass of our galaxy, we'll call it mass of galaxy, is equal to 4 times 10 to the 41 kilograms. So these are large numbers that we're working with because these are astronomically large objects. Now, part A. I'm asked to find what is the period, which we use, uh, we denote with the letter T. And part B, I'm asked to find what is the orbital speed. So I need the, the velocity of the sun around the galaxy. Now, we can go to our chapter summary and we can look at what various equations we have. I know a radius and I know uh, a mass of a galaxy. And they give us an equation that looks like it might be useful for period. They give us the period for an object that orbits the sun, which tells us uh, for part A, the period squared is equal to 4 times pi squared divided by big G, the universal gravitational constant, times ms times r cubed. And what we do is this is for a planet or some other object that's orbiting the sun. So we use the mass of the sun, because the mass of the sun is providing the gravitational force that's keeping you in orbit. We can adjust this equation a little bit. It works for any kind of circular orbit, uh, including orbiting the galaxy. Except in the case of the galaxy, we don't have the mass of the sun that's keeping everything in orbit. The mass of the galaxy is keeping everything in orbit. And they kind of give us a hint when they say that we can consider that all of the mass can be regarded as concentrated at the center of the galaxy. So that kind of tells us that, that the mass at the middle of the galaxy is keeping everything in orbit. So we can get our period is 4 times pi squared divided by big G, the universal gravitational constant. Instead of the mass of the sun, we're going to use the mass of the galaxy because that's what's keeping everything orbiting. And then we multiply by r cubed. And I have all of my numbers. I can plug in all the numbers that I know. So let's minimize this a little bit so that we can plug in our numbers. We get t squared. And we just want t, so we're going to take the square root of all of this stuff. We're going to take the square root of 4 times pi squared divided by big G. And big G, we plug in our number 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times the mass of the galaxy, which is going to be 4 times 10 to the 41 kilograms. And then multiply by the radius cubed, which is going to be 2.84 times 10 to the 20 meters. And that's going to be cubed. Now, all we have to do is plug this all into your calculator to find that the period is equal to 5.8 times 10 to the 15 seconds. And then we can take this information and we can use this to plug in and find what the velocity is for part B. So what's the velocity that we're orbiting the galaxy with? There's a few different ones I can use. I can use 
that the velocity of the sun is going to have to be equal to the square root of g times the mass of the galaxy over r. And here I did the same thing that I did um, with the period equation. In the book, they actually give us the velocity of an object orbiting the sun is equal to the square root of g times m sun over r. This is when you're orbiting the sun because the sun provides the gravity for you to actually stay in orbit. So in this case, the sun is staying in orbit because the galaxy pulls on it. So this is the velocity for the galaxy. You just replace the mass that's providing the gravity, um, the mass with whichever mass is providing the gravity. So I can use this equation to find the velocity of the sun. There's an alternative. I could also use the velocity of the sun has to be equal to 2 times pi times the radius of the sun, so the circumference of the circle that the sun orbits around the galaxy with, divided by t, 2 pi r over t. Either one of these equations will work. All you have to do now is plug in to either one of these. Plug in your numbers, and you will find that the velocity of the sun is equal to 3.1 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. And that is problem 23. I also received a question on how to do problem number 30. So chapter 9, problem number 30. In this problem, we have a Jupiter-sized planet that orbits the star 55 Cancri with an orbital radius of 8.2 times 10 to the 11 meters. So let's go ahead and write that down. Radius is 8.2 times 10 to the 11 meters. The orbital period of this planet is 13 years. So the period, big T, is 13 years. And I'm going to write ahead, go away, I'm going to go right ahead, and I'm going to adjust this, and I'm going to convert it into SI units. So I know one year is 365 days. I know one day is 24 hours. And I know one hour is 3,600 seconds. So my years cancel with my years, my days cancel with my days, my hours cancel with my hours, and I end up with a period that's equal to 4.1 times 10 to the 8 seconds. We are asked to find what is the mass of the star 55 Cancri, and how does this compare with the mass of the sun? So I need to figure out some masses. Uh, I need to start looking at some of the equations that I have, and I have some equations for velocities. Okay, I know that the velocity of an orbit is equal to 2 pi r, the total distance, the circumference of a circular orbit, divided by the period, divided by the time. But I also know that v is related to the mass of whatever you're orbiting according to the square root of g times the mass of whatever you're orbiting, divided by the radius that you orbit with. Okay, I want to make this a little bit easier. I don't like square roots, so I'm going to square both of these. I'm going to square both sides of both of these. So I can find that v squared is equal to 4 times pi squared times r squared divided by the period squared. Or I can find that v squared is equal to g times m divided by r. And since I have a v squared here and a v squared here, these are the same v squareds. So I can set these two equations equal to each other. So I do that and find 4, to keep it in the same color, let's do 4 times pi squared times r squared divided by t squared is equal to g times m divided by r. And what I was asked to find was the mass, so I can take this equation and I can solve it for mass. And come over here, do some algebra, solve this for mass to find 4 times pi squared times r cubed divided by t squared uh, and g 
g is equal to m. And now I can just plug in all my numbers there. Or I can plug in my numbers, uh, which I think we prefer to do uh, right here without solving for the variables. So I can do 4 times my pi squared, and my r squared is going to be 8.2 times 10 to the 11 meters. And I need to square that all divided by my period squared, which is going to be 4.1 times 10 to the 8 seconds squared is equal to big G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons times meters squared per kilogram squared. And again, big G is a constant. You would be given that. And then this is going to be multiplied by big M, whatever my mass is, the thing I'm looking for, all divided by my radius, which once again is 4.1 times 10 to the 8th. Uh, sorry, that's not the radius. The radius is 8.2 times 10 to the 11 meters. And now the only thing that I'm looking for is my mass. I'm doing some algebra. You can multiply all these numbers out and do the algebra. If you are struggling with that, you should have dropped this class by now. And you get that the mass is equal to 1.9 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And then part B becomes very easy because all we need to do is compare that to the mass of the sun. So the mass of the sun is equal to 1.99 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. So these are similarly sized stars. To figure out how similar they are, to compare them, we're going to do a percent difference. So we should know percent differences from your labs. Percent difference is the... Um, one value minus another divided by uh, by one uh, times 100. So we're going to do the value of our, our star that we calculated, 1.9 times 10 to the 30 kilograms minus 1.99 times 10 to the 30 kilograms, the mass of the sun, all divided by 1.9 times 10 to the 30 kilograms and multiply that by 100 to get a 4.5 percent difference. And notice the important piece here, these absolute value signs that make this uh, difference actually positive. Because when you take this difference, you'll get a negative number, but you take the absolute value so that your percent difference turns out to be positive. Percent differences should always be positive. And that's problem number 30. So the last question that I was asked in chapter 9 was number 56. Chapter 9, number 56. And in this one, we have an artificial satellite of 1,300 kilograms made of aluminum that's in a circular orbit at a height of 100 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Atmospheric friction removes energy from the satellite and causes it to spiral downward so that it ultimately crashes into the ground. Part A, uh, we want to know what is the initial orbital energy of gravity plus kinetic of the satellite, what is the final energy when the satellite comes to rest on the ground, and what is the energy change. So, to figure this out, we need to start writing down what we know. We know the mass is equal to 1,300 kilograms. We know that the height of this satellite above the Earth's surface is 100 times 10 to the third meters. And there's some extra information that we actually know in addition to this. And uh, we'll talk about what all that is. So in part A, we need to find the total energy of this uh, satellite when it's initially in orbit, when it comes to rest on the ground, and how much the energy has changed. So the energy when it's in orbit is going to be equal to its kinetic energy plus its potential energy. Now I know kinetic energy has to be equal to one-half mass times velocity squared, 
and I know the gravitational potential energy is equal to negative g times mass of the Earth times the mass of the satellite divided by r. That is the gravitational potential energy between any two masses. Uh, the product of their masses times big G divided by the radius. So my total energy, E, is going to have to be equal to 1 half mass times velocity squared plus negative G times mass of the Earth times mass of the satellite divided by the, the radius. Now we need to start thinking about what things I actually know. I know the mass of my satellite, so I know what these little m's are. I can plug those in. I know what big G is, that's a constant. I know the mass of the Earth. Now what I need to do is figure out what is V and what is R. We'll start with R because that's slightly easier to figure out, at least in concept. The R that we're talking about here has to be equal to the radius of the Earth plus the height that we're orbiting at. Because when you're orbiting something, uh, when you're talking about your energies, especially your gravitational potential energy, your distance of your orbit is from the center of the two objects. So from the center of the Earth is not just the height that you're orbiting at, it's also the radius of the Earth added on top of that. So that radius is going to have to be equal to the radius of the Earth, which is 6378000, meters, plus the height that we're orbiting at, 100 times 10 to the third meters. So this gives us a total radius of 6478000 meters, 6,478,000 meters for our radius. From here, we could start hunting for how to find uh, the velocity that we're looking for, how to find this V. Or we could recognize that V is equal to the square root of g times the body or mass of the body you're orbiting, so the mass of the Earth, over r, how far away you are for uh, where you're orbiting. So I'm going to take this, and I'm actually going to do some algebra. I'm going to plug in some um, equations. I'm going to plug in this v equation. Rather than just going straight for numbers, I'm going to use uh, some letters here to make our lives easier. So I get 1 half my mass times my v squared, and my v, if I plug in this whole equation and I square it, I get g times me divided by r. And that's going to be plus a negative g times mass of Earth times uh, mass of your satellite divided by r. And I notice that these are very similar. So this guy is negative g m m over r, and this guy is positive 1 half g m m over r. So if I add those two together, I end up with a total energy that's equal to negative g times mass of the Earth times mass of the satellite, all divided by r. So my total energy of my orbit is just equal to um, negative g m m over, over 2 r. So 1 g m m over r. Uh, negative 1 gmm over r plus 1 half gmm over r leaves you with negative uh, 1 half gmm over, over r. Okay, so I can just use this equation now. Instead of having to find what this velocity is, instead of just plugging my numbers in and, and trying to run to the right answer, if I do a little bit of thinking, I can get to this equation. And if I know all these variables, do I know g? Do I know mass of the Earth, the mass of the satellite, and the radius? I do, so I can plug in my numbers. At this point, this is a plug and chug question.
So because that last screen, uh, last slide that I was writing on was getting a little busy, we'll repeat here that E is equal to negative G, mass of the Earth, mass of the satellite, over 2R. And we can plug and chug our numbers in. E equals negative G, which is 6.67, times 10 to the negative 11. The mass of the Earth, which you can look up in a table, is 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The mass of the satellite is 1,300 kilograms, all divided by 2 times the radius of, uh, of, of the orbit, which is the radius of the Earth plus the height of the orbit, which was 6, 4, 7, 8, 0, 0, 0 meters. And when you plug in all of these numbers into your calculator, you will find the final answer that the energy total energy of this orbit is equal to negative 4 times 10 to the 10 joules. And now part B. What if I want to find the energy, or part B of the first part, what if I want to find the energy once I hit the ground? The energy on the ground is once again going to be equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, but the kinetic energy is going to go to zero. K equals zero because kinetic energy is equal to one-half mass times velocity squared, and once my satellite's on the ground, my velocity is zero. I've stopped. I've crashed. So kinetic energy is zero, and my energy on the ground is just going to be equal to the potential energy that I have. So the energy on the ground is equal to negative g times mass of the Earth times mass of the satellite divided by the radius. And in this case, the distance that my satellite is no longer has that height because it's falling, fallen down, so the radius is just the radius of the Earth. And I can plug in all my numbers to find that energy on the ground is going to be equal to negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, my value for big G, times the mass of the Earth, which is 5.98, times 10 to the 24, times the mass of my satellite, which is 1,300 kilograms, and then divided by the size of my uh, orbit, how far away I am from the center of whatever I'm orbiting, uh, which is just going to be the radius of the Earth this time, 6.378 times 10 to the 6 meters. Because I've landed on the ground, I no longer have any orbital height. And the energy that I have on the ground is going to be equal to negative 8.13 times 10 to the 10 joules. And then if I want to figure out the change in energy that I have, the change in energy has to be equal to the energy on the ground minus the energy that I had in orbit. So that would be negative 8.13 times 10 to the 10 joules minus a negative 4 times 10 to the 10 joules for the energy I had in orbit. And I end up with a change in energy equal to negative 4.13 times 10 to the 10 joules. And that negative indicates that my satellite has lost energy during this fall. And the next part really gets to where did that actual energy go?